Hey guys, and welcome to this third part of the uh, appetizer series. In this video, we are going to model, um, first of all, the bowl for the olives, which should be fairly quick, and then we are going to model the olives themselves. So, um, yeah, let's go to top view. And let's, first of all, add a circle. And let's use eight vertices. And let's hit Actually, let's not hit fill. Let's just move it to over. Um, just about there. Like this. Okay. Now let's go to side view. And let's just go to edit mode. And let's extrude it. Let's move it up and let's scale it in uh, down here. And let's move this part up a little bit more as well. Okay, like this. And now let's just extrude that one more time so that we get um, the bottom where it touches um, the table. And now in this case, since we are working with a uh, ceramic bowl, it doesn't matter if it actually goes into the table. So let's just do that. And now let's once again hit the um, slash button on our uh, numpad. And now into edit mode. And we can actually leave the, uh, the bottom open, doesn't matter. Let's now select this row of vertices and let's just um, do one more thing. We actually, we need to scale that in because we still want um, a radius going on there afterwards when adding the subdivision surface. And now let's just move that up a little bit more. Let's add in one more vertex. Let's scale that one in, move that up a little bit more. E to extrude to just about right there, I'd say. Okay, and now um, let me just bring up the finished image so that we have something so I have something to show you how it's supposed to end up in the end. You can see and this bowl is slightly um, um, shifted in a way, okay? Let me just show you that on the actual finished scene that I created beforehand. You can see in the, fin in the finished scene is kind of shifted like this, and I think that just gives it a nice touch. It's less boring than just a normal bowl. And let's just do that by um, by extruding it one more time, like this. And now let's go to one on our numpad, or actually set the right. Let's just bring everything back with the flash key. One. Okay. Edit mode. Let's just rotate that. So just about right there, move it up. But now you can see we rotated it all right, but it's now it no longer no longer lines up with those outer vertices. Control one to look from the other side. So let's just scale it in the x-axis until, with sh if you click shift at the same time, you can scale in smaller increments until just about right there. Okay. And that does it, it doesn't need to be exact, just approximately. Now let's just um, uh, take that vertex there, duplicate it, scale it in a little bit, like this. Let's take the top row of vertices, E, S as well, just about like that. Let's set that in a little bit more, S. And now we can actually just connect them. This, the easiest way to do that is to go into um, edge, uh, edge select mode and then just select them like this and you can very easily connect them. Okay, now let's then move the whole thing down a little bit more actually. So, okay, like this. Now ES once again, extrude them like this and once again until we're in the middle. And then one important thing, um, well, actually, let's just do it the wrong way so you can see what the problem is. Alt M at center, okay? And now let's just make sure that those are not on the same level, because otherwise it would look um, too flat, like this. Now this looks all fine and dandy. If you add in a subdivision modifier, two, actually even three, yeah, three looks better. We can still adjust that. And now you can see, um, in here, let's just try to get some reflections there. Um, 
this isn't perfectly smooth, but let's just make an extreme example here. Wrong. Oh, I have to go to um, vertex select, but that's the problem. And you can see that you get this, um, this is hard to explain. It looks kind of like a star there. It's not very smooth, okay? And that's because we have triangles that go towards the middle. Now, in order to avoid that, there's one very simple trick. Let's just make sure that we have an additional loop there. Um, like there. And now this one and this vertex are on the same level with SC0, like this. And now it actually does what it's supposed to do, okay? Something like that doesn't look too bad. I might, I might actually just scale it out a little bit more. Somewhat like this and down. Okay, so this is our bowl. Now let's also set it to smooth. And you can see those lines. We talked about them in one of the first steps in preparation tutorials. Those are um, screwed up normals. Let's just go to edit mode, I'll select everything, and just so we can see it under in the properties panel, you can hide and unhide the properties panel with N, by the way. Under normals, you can have face, and now you can see um, what those normals do. Um, they all point in, in, in a different direction. Those outward, but then those there, they point inward, and that's just not what we want. So if you see that problem, just hit Control N while everything's selected, and you can see all the normals are being recalculated, and now everything is all right. Okay, you can see I save often. That's a good a good habit to get into. Always click Control S to save. And one thing you should not do, you can also click Control W to save, okay? But if you control W, then chances are that you have another application besides Blender. Like for example, I don't know, maybe the internet this one as well. Let's just see if that happens here as well. You can see Control W and it quits um the internet browser. So you should get used to saving in Blender with Control S and not with Control W. Okay, so now about our bowl. One thing I don't like too much is the upper part is a bit too bulky, a bit too big. Let's just C, B, it's like the upper part and let's just move it down a little bit like this. Okay, this is better. Now about the olives. Um, let's just hide everything for now. And let's add in a sphere, okay? And um, olives, they have kind of the shape like an egg with a hole in the middle. So let's just, Z, let's just select the upper part. Actually, this is a bit too high resolution. Delete that, shift add sphere. And now let's set that to 16 and that to eight. Okay, that's, that's still enough. Now let's add one additional loop in here. And now let's just box select the upper part there. Let's scale that down with Shift C to just about there. And now let's make sure we select this. Shift S, curse to select it. Period on your numpad. Uh, yeah, anyway. Then box select the upper part again. And scale everything up um, without scale, uh, only on the C-axis, of course, like this. And now in general, a little bit more. Okay, and this looks like a fair start for an olive. Now let's delete those two vertices, delete vertex. Now, in order, if you have something like this and you want to connect, the easiest way is to just grab the lower end, extrude it, move it up, some more, and let's just go in there as close as we can, like this, GC, and let's just try to match them like this. Scale that up a little bit more. Um, control, comma, to make sure that we're actually on median point. And then S, and let's scale it until it actually fits together. That should be close enough, actually. Let's just see if it already works with remove doubles. And it doesn't work. Um, let me just see something here.
maybe now, remove doubles, still doesn't work. Okay, now from the side. Okay, but now you can see, and they are gone. Um, should have moved, should have um, worked a bit smoother, but usually it works. Okay, now this is our olive. And now let's in add in a subdivision surface. And you can see that's why they call it subdivision surface modeling, because you use them constantly. And now let's in the vertex over there. And actually also one in there. Okay, let's make sure that it's not too sharp, okay? Otherwise it just looks unrealistic and the same for the lower end. Like this. Okay. And now I'm actually quite unhappy with the lower end, I must say. Okay, but I shouldn't have scaled that along. Oh boy. Um, like this. Okay, and also, uh, let's make the whole thing a little bit longer. A little, just a tiny little bit. Like this. Okay, so we've got ourselves one olive. And I just think that this middle hole is too big. With C, let's just grab those. S, Shift C, and let's just move it in a little bit. Like so. Okay, so we've got ourselves an olive, but this olive is a bit too even, okay? And in order to get rid of that evenness, uh, first of all, let's just hit smooth over there. You know, also actually have a smooth olive. And now in order to get rid of the smoothness, let's just add a new modifier. And that is the, um, where is it? The displacement modifier over here, this place. Okay, and I didn't cover that one as well in the other series. So with the displacement modifier, you can displace the surface of that particular object with a texture, okay? And textures are over there. We did not yet talk about textures too much either. So let's create a new texture actually, um, like this. And you can always add textures to materials, okay? And we just created a material, so let's just call that material um, olives. And let's just actually call it olives green because there are also going to be black olives. And now let's create a texture. And let's make sure the first thing, let's uncheck that. Because if you check that, then it will actually try to um, influence the material. But we just want that as a displacement and not to influence the material itself. So we need to uncheck that. And now over here, we can actually select that texture, which is, let's name it as well, um, olives underline displacement okay and then over here you can now actually select olive displacement and you can see what happens it actually displaces the surface of your olive now this is not quite what we were going for so let's just scale the strength down to let's say 0.1 for now okay that meant that might look decent and now as you can also see this texture is too small okay so let's go over here and now let's actually um, bump up the size and you can see what happens it interactively adjusts um, what it looks like. And we can actually go all, all the way to two, okay? And then over here, let's just bump up the strength a little bit, not too much, and certainly not in the negative part, just like this, maybe. Just so it's not quite... Oh, that looks okay. Now let's just actually move them in a little bit, after all, like this and also on the lower end, control R, like, actually not control R, control, control E, edge slide, like this, okay. And now one last thing, um, those parts are a bit too even in my opinion, so let's just select those, let's scale them down a little bit, and do the same thing with them as well, and let's scale those up a bit and same goes over there it's always important that if you try to go for a uh, well nearly or, or, or somewhat photorealistic result that you randomize everything a little because otherwise it just looks like well CG which you don't want actually let's just move that a bit up, like this and now the same goes for the lower end um, 
that down. That as well. Okay, that's too much. And the good thing is about organic things, it isn't that big of a deal if um, something's a bit off, because um, organic things tend to be um, well displaced in a way. But this one is definitely too much. Still a bit too much. Okay, now the only thing I don't like is this part over there, so let's just move that up a little bit as well. And that. Okay, so this is this is perfect. This is our olive. Um, now, next thing we need to do in order to get a perfect olive is we need to get that orange uh, pepperoni thing going on inside. I think it's called pepperoni in English, I'm not quite sure, just the red part that's inside the olive. And that is actually quite easy to model. Let's just hit the slash key again. Or the alt H. Yeah, I just hit everything. Oops. Let's move that a bit up as well. And now let's just make sure that we select Shift S while in object mode. Cursor to select it, so it's the cursor actually in the middle. Shift A and cube. Okay. And now let's go to C. One. Scale the cube down like this, and then scale it up on the C axis like so. And let's make sure that it goes a bit out of the olive on the top and on the bottom. And then let's just add one loop cut to over there and one loop cut to over there. Okay. And now we should actually be able to add a subdivision surface on level two. And let's see how that looks. It looks all right, but we also need to make sure that we have two, two, loop, cuts, two loop cuts like this. And let's actually scale them on the y-axis a bit apart even to like that. Okay. So now let's just scale it up a little bit more. Um, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. It is once again not that important because um, you can only see the tip and the bottom, but it's still a good idea to make it look okay. Cool. Now, once again, subdivision of two is okay and then also smooth. And that is our paprika part. Now here we don't need to use a displacement because it's only a small part that we can actually see. And also one thing, um, if you have a large scene with lots of olives, if you just want to make an olive render, then you need to make sure that you have all different olives, okay, in size and form and so on. But since we all we only have um, a very small amount of olives, okay, then because they are distributed differently and they all lie there in a different angle, it doesn't really matter and you cannot see it on the render. So, yeah, that's basically how we do that. And now, in order to make sure um, that those things stay together, let's just pattern a couple of things. Let's first of all select this, uh, the water and the glass. Control P, object. Now you can see if you move the glass, the, uh, the water moves as well. Same over here, select the wine and the glass. Control P, object to, to parent. And then the same thing over there. Um, now, first of all, let's just parent um, the um, pepperoni thing, that red thing, to the olive, Control p And now let's just go to top view, and let's just move it over there, and let's just scale it down. Okay, to just about... Um, well, even a bit more, actually, right there. Now, R, Y. Oh, and one other thing, let's also... Control A, apply scale for... Okay, that's not funny. Now, since we applied the scale, we would have to redo the settings in the displacement modifier. Um, yeah, but I just noticed that in my other scene, the olives are scaled down as well. And here we have a scale of 1. Now, let's go to Control Z. Let's undo that scaling. Now we have 0 0.118. And that is actually quite the same amount of scaling we had with... On my other file, let's go with 1.27. This is perfect. And about the paprika, let me just compare that as well. Yeah, this is um, this is all right. Okay, so now let's take that olive, let's move it down, and let's rotate it around the um, y-axis first, like so. And now let's just try to make a nice um, arrangement of olives, basically. And let's go to the camera view to see what we're doing. 
Let's just move that back a little bit like this. Like that. And they don't really have to touch the ground because we're going to add oil afterwards. Let's just move the, 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 the C axis. Let's move it over there and around the X axis a little bit as well. Next thing, RX. And because we didn't create additional olives, it might make sense to make sure that this is the opposite end of the olive from this over there, so they don't look too similar. And now I'm kind of going off script, I just kind of arrange them in any way that they look good. Like this, maybe. Um, RX. Like this, and then one more over there. RC. Something like that. And that is stupid. Let's just scale up the bowl a little tiny bit. Okay, let's once again duplicate that. Let's move it over there. It's a bit tedious to just arrange them this way. But uh, yeah, that looks fairly good. And then let's just do one last of them. Um, Shift D. Move it over there. R, C. Like this. And also R, X. Move it over there, bit down like this. And let's just move that in. Oh, we all, by the way, you can also change from global to local, which will then take the local coordinates of your object and it will consider how it is rotated. Then you can just move that back in a little bit like this. Um, okay, so that doesn't look too bad. Um, cool, now about the black olives. Let's just arrange them. Duplicate that again. That was the wrong... Oh, and let's go back to global. And actually, for the black olives, we need to delete that pe pepperoni thing because you never have that in black olives, or at least I've never seen it in it. Delete, okay. Rx. And against common belief, black olives do not have to be smaller than um, normal olives. There are also big black olives. Not that anyone cares, but anyway. Okay, shift D. And one last. Rx. Someone like there. Okay, that looks um, fairly good. Actually, let's just add one more in the background there, like this. Now, if we, if you want to go for an animation here and you want to circle around um, this bowl, then you need to make sure that the olives touch the ground from whenever wherever you look at them. But in this way, it just needs to look good from one angle, and then it's okay. And I don't like that too much. RC. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So those are your olives. Um, let's do one last thing. Let's just select all the pepperonis. One, two, three, four, five, six, two, six, okay. And let's hit Control G. And now you can see create new group. We just created a group. Now under over here, you can see group. So now all those objects are in a group. And let's just call that group um, red, because I'm not quite sure what they're really called. Red. And then let's select all the green olives, which are just all the olives with a pepperoni in them. Like this. And let's hit Control G. And let's name that group um, olives. Underline green. And then let's select the remaining four. Control G. And let's name those olives. Underline black. Okay, now you can see we have olives black olives green and red and now you can just select one of those hit shift G group and this way you can just easily select all the pepperonis and so on and now one last thing let's just select shift G all the all the, uh, the green olives 
and shift G on the black olives. Anyway, we can also do that separately. All the, uh, the green olives, control, uh, select the bowl, or shift, select the bowl, control P, object, and then once again the same thing with those black olives, shift, um, select the bowl, control P, object. Now you can move the bowl and everything moves along with it. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, we finished um, creating, modeling the olives and the bowl and the pepperoni in it. So I hope you learned something. I hope you liked it. Um, it's still not very difficult by now, um, but maybe you were able to pick up a trick or two. So thank you for watching. If you have any kind of questions or comments or whatever, post it in the comments. Um, yeah, and I see you next time.